Ready? Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm super excited for tonight because if any of you have taken the class where I'm the teacher, I love to focus on techniques. So I always tell everybody, we are in an hour. We are going to do this painting that you guys all uh, signed up to do. But I really want to focus on the pen and ink look and watercolor and just getting a really unique look. So if yours is not exactly the same, if maybe you want your pink flowers to be more red or these little red flowers, maybe you want them to be blue or purple or any color palette, focus on the technique. And really we're just gonna have a really fun time learning something a little bit different than traditional acrylic painting. So I'm excited for you guys to hear. So I want you guys to know that Emily is, um, in the studio with us tonight. And she is the best at answering everybody's questions. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat and she'll answer them or let you know what colors we're using or brushes or supplies. But Emily, Emily's there for any of your guys' questions. Thank you, Kirsten, so, I'm really excited. I hope this one goes good, Emily. I'm gonna try to go slow. Sometimes I get a little bit carried away. I get excited, so I go a little fast, but I'm gonna go slow and we're gonna get this painting done in about an hour. So first, I'm just gonna show you guys the supplies that I am using um, for today's class. So 12 by 12 canvas. And just like always, if your canvas is bigger or smaller or rectangle, it's all the same. It's all about technique but I'm using a 12 by 12, just stretched canvas from Michaels. And then we are using folk art matte acrylic. And just to make sure I want, we get a lot of questions about this, why they look different. And everybody knows that we are relabeling and freshening up our folk art. So even though these look totally different, it's still folk art acrylic, old label and new label. So we are gonna be using True blue, licorice, which is which is a solid black. We are going to be using lime green and classic green. So just a light and a dark green. We are going to be using pumpkin orange, I'm sorry, pure orange, lipstick red. And then we're going to be using this really pretty bright pink. This is bright pink. <laughs> and then we're going to be using this beautiful yellow, which is daffodil yellow. So that is the palette that we are going to use for this watercolor bouquet of flowers in this cute little vase. And then the other thing you guys are going to need that was on the supply list is a Sharpie marker. And it's the ultra fine. But again, if you want a little bit thicker of a black outline, a doodle at the end, you could use a larger marker. But I'm going to use the Sharpie ultra fine. And then I want to make sure you guys have a palette. Um, whether it's a paper plate, whether it's palette paper. For this technique, I want to have water that I clean my brushes in. And then I have a little, um, an extra container of water that I'm actually going to use to keep clean to blend my colors. So dirty water for cleaning your brushes and then a little thing of clean water for the watercolor technique. Now I want to make sure you guys have a pencil. Um, cause we're going to, I never want to focus on a pattern because I feel like what happens when you focus on a pattern is you almost end up doing kind of a paint by number technique. And I want this to be more fun and loose and just learning a lot of great stuff. So a pencil, we're going to lightly create our pattern. And then something that we always have in all of our classes is just a basic blow dryer. And that's just so we can get to the fun stuff. That's always at the end of the class and get our canvas dry each step of the, of the way. All right, so that's what you guys need. How are we doing, Emily? Does anyone have any questions on all the supplies that we're using? No questions on supplies. All right, I love that. So then we are gonna get started. Let me make sure that you can see both. Scoot that over a little bit and make sure that you guys can always see that one a little bit. So I have got just the basic pencil. You can use colored chalk. Um, you could use a ballpoint pen, but sometimes it's just too much pressure and it could damage your canvas. But don't use your Sharpie, mainly because we want that really pretty bold black scribble to be at the end and a pencil is so much lighter. 
So all I'm gonna do, we are not gonna create a perfect pattern. All we are gonna do is really basic shapes so that we're confident about where we're gonna place all the elements that we're painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of establish the ground or the table that your base is on. So I'm going, I always like to use my hand to measure, like maybe a full finger up, or I'll measure from the top, a finger down, but I'm just gonna place my finger and kind of establish just really lightly a line. And I know that's gonna be really hard for you guys to see, but I'm just really lightly sketching that just represents the table or the ground that the vase is sitting on. I'm gonna go a little bit darker, but I'm only gonna go darker for you guys so that you guys can see it. Keep your pattern as light as possible, just cause then you don't have to work to cover it up. But I'm gonna go a little bit darker just or heavier so that you guys can see it. So that's my ground, not perfect, just a guide. And then I'm gonna kind of measure my base. My base is about the width of my hand and I don't want it in the center. I want it a little bit to the right and very lightly, I'm gonna go a little bit below my table and I'm just gonna kind of draw, can you guys see that? It's really light. Oh, there you go. Can you see that, Emily? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so just bringing a real, it up closer really helps be able to see those pencil marks. Oh, I'm gonna do that then. I'm not gonna go as dark. I'm gonna lift it up every time. In fact, I'm gonna soften this one on the ground. Just so I'm not working to cover that up. Okay, so then you've got your little vase. And again, it's not perfect. Both sides are not straight lines. It's just placement for where that vase is gonna be. All right, then I'm gonna separate the flowers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is these big pink, almost like roses, peonies. And I know I wanna have a bigger one over here. So I'm just gonna, again, really lightly sketch. Oh, could you guys see that? I yeah. don't think so. Oh yeah, there you go. Sketch a large circle. I'm not doing, I'm not doing a pattern of where we doodle. I'm not doing the irregular petals. I'm just doing an oval to kind of give us a home for that flower. And then I'm gonna jump over here and do two little ones. One kind of outside of the vase. I'll lift it up every time. Make sure you guys can see it. Oh, I never get it right in the camera. There we go. Just placement. And now I'm gonna kind of see the orange flowers. I'm not gonna do the petals. I'm not gonna do the centers. All I'm gonna do is again, placement. So I'm gonna do just a little circle over there. And I actually am gonna do just a really soft center. So it looks more like, oh, I'm the worst about that. I go the opposite way. Look at me, <laughs> like a little donut, just to represent the center. And then this next flower is kind of peeking out behind this rose. So I'm gonna do the center, just kind of a little half circle. So it's peeking out behind that rose. And then up here on top is another big orange flower. And then just that little circle in the middle to represent the center. Oh, how's that? Can you guys see that? Yeah, I think that if we were um, painting donuts, it would take this to a completely different place. <laughs> but I can see them both. We've got donuts and we've also got florals. Yep, they will turn into florals, I promise. All right, then all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna draw a pattern at all for the green area between the flowers. I'm gonna do just a few areas. I'm gonna do this little stem, this little wildflower, I'm only gonna do the stem. And then this little wildflower shooting out over here, I'm only gonna do the stem. And then this little one coming out of the vase, I'm only gonna do the stem. And then what I'm gonna do, again, really, really light. I am gonna lightly, lightly sketch 
the stems coming into the vase. And what I want you guys to do, instead of just going straight into the vase, I want you to actually match where the stem would be in the flower and then kind of curve that into the vase. That one, it would kind of naturally fall like that. That one would kind of fall behind this and then come into the vase. This one would naturally kind of curve from the other side. This big pink one would kind of curve from there. And this little guy going out the edge of the vase would actually kind of curve back in like that. So again, just to really give you confidence in where you're gonna be painting all of our elements. Kirsten, and would then, you mind lifting it up again so they can see where absolutely. you put those marks? If I can get it there, there we go. Yes. How's that? So see, they're really loose. They don't look exactly like the flowers we're gonna be painting. They just give you placement for all of the design elements. Does that make sense? I'm not drawing any, I'm not drawing any of these leaves in the middle. I'm not drawing, drawing any of these little flowers that come off that stem. We're gonna do all of that with painting techniques. Now, what I am gonna do, just because they're kind of a bold or focal point in the leaves, I'm gonna draw maybe this leaf and this leaf. I might draw these two here, just because they're the edge of the bouquet. And then I might draw a few over here, again, just because they're the edge of the bouquet. But all of these, I'm just gonna leave space for. Let's see. So over here, I'm just gonna draw two very loose leaves. Not perfect at all. And then right here, I'm actually gonna see that rather than a leaf with that shape, I'm gonna see it as a heart. Everyone can draw a heart. So right here at the top of my vase, I'm just gonna draw a heart, which is gonna turn into a leaf. And then right next to that, I'm gonna draw just a, real, a really standard leaf. And then I'm gonna sneak over here. This is my pink flower. And I'm gonna draw a leaf that kind of droops from behind. And one more that kind of comes from behind. And maybe one more. You always like to do when you do, oh, I'm crooked again. Goodness gracious. Mirror image and me are not super good friends. There we go. Whenever you're doing a little group of something, they always say threes, fives, odds are better because it just keeps your, your design really organic. When you do evens, it almost looks too matchy-matchy. All right, can you guys see again, it's not a perfect pattern. Oh, look at me. It's not a perfect pattern. It's just placement for all of our design elements. Any questions on the, on the sketch or the pattern, Emily? I think that it helps a lot for you to bring that up high. And um, if you could explain the reasoning why you're going so lightly with the pencil, I think that would help people understand. Sure. Yeah. So the main reason I'm going light with the pencil, lots of watercolor artists that you see in galleries and, and gift cards and journals, a lot of them, you actually see the pencil. And it's a really, um, it's really a beautiful look when you're doing watercolor. So if your pencil does show, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very beautiful. A lot of watercolor artists prefer that. The main reason I'm just going really light is I don't want anyone to have to feel like they have to work to, co to cover up their pattern. Because we're not doing traditional folk art acrylic painting and using the acrylic right out of the bottle where the pencil would cover up perfectly because we're adding water and doing watercolor. I don't want that pencil pattern to mess up the look of your painting. I wanna make sure you guys can tell. See how it's a really soft watercolor wash and we're not doing traditional acrylic paint, acrylic painting. So that's why I don't want that strong pencil pattern to be showing through. 
Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you so much for the explanation. Absolutely. Okay, now we'll start the fun. Make sure you guys have some paper towels. Excuse me. And I'm going to use mostly my palette paper. But again, if you've got a glass plate or a, or a plastic paper plate, whatever you're using will work totally perfect. All right. So the first thing I'm going to use is the bright pink. And I'm gonna squeeze just a little. You guys, today we need almost no paint. We're mixing it with water. What, uh -huh. um, what type of brushes are you gonna be using for this project? Oh, look at me. So I called out for a gold Taclon. Uh, it's a Craft Smart brush set and it has a variety of brushes. But what we're gonna focus on today is there's a half inch in the set I think there's an eight, a six, maybe. Yep, a six and a two. Those are gonna be the brushes that we use the most. And I always tell everybody, really, they're just a great assortment of flat brushes. Small, medium, that half inch is the largest that we'll use. So they don't have to be the exact size. You just wanna have a small, whoops, a small, a medium and a larger flat brush or shader brush. So those are the ones we're gonna focus on today. Good deal? Awesome, thank you so much. All right, so I've got a little bit of the bright pink on my palette and then just the tiniest little bit of lipstick red, like little tiny. And then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna add water on my palette. And what I always like to do for no reason other than it just allows me to add more or less water is I'm just adding water to the side of the little, the little dollop of paint. Rather than mixing a big runny puddle of watercolor, I'm just adding it just to the side so I can go in and add water if I want more or I've got that natural or that paint right out of the bottle. So you've got two options, basic acrylic that comes right out of the bottle and then a watered down version. All right, so it's pretty much half water, half folk art. And then all I'm gonna do is really kind of base coat those large flower areas where we've got our pink flowers. So it's your big one your two little ones. And what I want you guys to see is you're not base coating, like coloring paint by number. You're just kind of randomly doing strokes to fill that area. You're going right over the pencil and you're kind of letting your brush jump around that area. Cause that way the color or the amount of water you have in your brush changes as you move your brush around and it gives you almost a little bit of shading. Can you guys see where, because you're not base coating, like outlining your pattern and then filling in very consistent and even, you're just moving your brush around that space, going directly over your pencil and kind of softening the edge. What was an oval, you're making more of an irregular organic flower shape. Always adding water to your folk art. And if you move the brush around, do a few strokes on this flower, pick up paint, do a few strokes on the other flower, rather than just coloring it in solid, you'll get all of that beautiful variation that the watercolor technique allows you to do. And there is no right or wrong to our pattern. That's what's so fun about this technique. You've got just a really organic, irregular edge. You don't have perfectly defined um, petals. You don't have, it doesn't look like a daisy. It's just very irregular. Let's see if I can be still enough and see where there's a little more water and a little less water. You just get all of that beautiful 
almost shading and highlighting, but it's just with more or less water. I've got a little area there that's white. I love that. I'm going to actually leave that there because the, the great thing about watercolor is letting your canvas or your background show through. I'm going to clean that same brush. I'm using the medium or the number eight flat. And then I'm going to sneak over in this lipstick red and just pull a little bit of the paint out and mix it with water. It's probably a little, the darker your color gets, sometimes the more water that you want, because you can always add, add more color, but you can't take color off. So this is probably two parts water to one part of the lipstick red. You can see how water it, it, watery it is on my palette. And then all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna draw a circle or I'm not gonna try to create a perfect pattern. I'm just gonna kind of using very loose, irregular brush strokes and jumping from flower to flower. I'm just gonna kind of create some depth by adding red to that wet pink base coat. And if you love the red, you can add more red and get a darker flower. I'm gonna get a little bit more water and I'm just gonna soften up where the pink and the red meet. But not letting it blend together because then you're just gonna get a solid color. You want all of that variety. Susie says that you're jumping from flower to flower like a bee. <laughs> I am like a bee. I'm just buzzing around. I don't know where everybody is, but we are here in Georgia. And Emily is spring like it. It's oh, here. yes. And the pollen has definitely <laughs> um, brought itself out for all those little bees to. Um, yes. Yeah, to jump from flower to flower. And everyone here in Georgia is most definitely feeling that. Well, I have to selfishly say the pollen doesn't affect me. So I hate that for anyone that gets terrible allergies because I don't want that on anyone. But the blooms and the green and the buds, I mean, it is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So, yes, it's very pretty to look at. I want to feel like a bee right now. I'm enjoying that. All right, so you should have just a lot of variety. And the main thing that you guys don't want is giant puddles. Like you can see, I've got a lot of wet built up paint right there. If you get too much, this is one of the things I hate about a one hour class. If you were at home and we weren't wanting to do the fun techniques at the end, I would just go put in a load of laundry and that would be dry in 20 minutes. But because we're doing a one hour class, if you've got a lot of extra water, just really lightly dab it with a paper towel. You don't wanna remove anything completely, but just that got off that area that was holding too much water because we want it to be dry when we do the pen and ink at the end. All right, so I cleaned my brush and now I'm gonna get a little bit of the pure orange and I'm gonna put that on my palette. Oh, just a little. I'm gonna get a little bit of the yellow. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these little areas that look like donuts. I'm gonna add water to the edge of my pure orange. The more water you add, the more pastel. You wanna add water so you get the watercolor look. But if you want a brighter orange, just add a little bit less water. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna leave that center yellow and I'm just gonna do really random strokes around the center of that donut. Kind of like a sun. Yeah. And don't, don't let them match exactly. You want it to be really organic and really different on each little flower. But I'm not using any of the beautiful acrylic right out of the bottle because I want that watercolor look, which what I love about folk art is even when you add this much water to your paint, you still get these really vibrant colors. 
So I've just kind of created a darker orange area towards the center of that little flower. I'm gonna add even more water to that same orange to get an even softer color. And then what I'm gonna do, these are a little bit more like daisies or have more specific flowers, not like a peony. So not perfect. Going over my pencil, I'm just gonna do almost like a C stroke, creating a few defined petals. But nothing, nothing exact. Let me hold that up. But see how I'm just kind of over my, my oval or my placement. I'm just creating a few defined petals. I'm gonna do the same thing on this little one. Let's see if I can do it while I'm holding it. Just a C stroke going right over that pencil pattern and just softening that edge. And the same thing with this one, a C stroke right over that pencil, but they're not spaced apart exactly. It's just creating a really soft edge. All right, I'm gonna set that back down. Always adding water. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in, always jumping around. You don't want it to look like it's been paint by numbered. When you jump around, you just get all that variety. Light orange, dark orange, all that shading and highlighting just by how much water and moving across the canvas, like a bee. I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna do that exact same thing in the yellow. That yellow is gorgeous. You don't want so much water, it's dripping off of your brush. So tap it on your paper towel if you ever need to. And then I'm just gonna fill in the center of those flowers. I overlapped the pink a little, I overlapped the orange a little, but the watercolor technique just blends and all of those colors just look so beautiful together. I'm gonna clean my brush in the water and I'm gonna go back into that pure orange and a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna just go a little bit, just like we did in the beginning with that little sun. I'm gonna just do a few areas. That's just a brighter orange. And that's just by almost doing a second coat of orange. You can keep it really soft and pastel, or you can add orange to just one flower, but I'm just getting, I wanna make sure you guys can see it, all that shading, all that variety. Any questions about our two little flowers? Uh, somebody was asking if they could use daffodil yellow instead of the pure orange for those flowers. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah, I think it's whatever you want your desired flower to look like. And then we also had a question about mixing um, the folk art matte acrylic paint with water. And uh -huh. just, um, I chimed in and, and somebody else chimed in too, that you're doing this thin down effect because you will want to create a faux watercolor effect, but sometimes uh -huh. the paint right out of the bottle is fine or mediums can be used depending on what kind of technique you want to execute. Oh, absolutely. The great thing about the folk art acrylic is it's perfect out of the bottle. Um, great coverage, great for so many different painting techniques, but it's really fun to try a, a new technique and do a faux watercolor. It's perfect for that just by adding water. Okay, so now we're gonna just kind of have fun with the leaves. This is always the place that people get a little bit nervous, but do not get nervous because always remember at the end, we're defining so many of the great details with the black marker. So what we're really doing mostly is just adding 
lots of really pretty layers of light green and dark green. So I'm gonna mix water with my light green or the lime. I'm gonna go right into that water and I'm gonna do the same thing with the dark green. And then I'm gonna just tap on my paper towel because again, I don't want too much water. And then I'm just gonna fill some areas. So because I love these little leaves that I actually created a pattern for, I'm gonna start there and going over my pencil using the dark green, I'm just gonna start adding color. I'm not filling them in, still only using the dark green, going right over that pencil. I'm just starting to add my first little bit of green. And remember, just like we did with the flowers, you can always add color, but you can't take it off. So I'm adding probably two parts water to one part paint. In this little center section of my flower, I'm just gonna lightly stroke, not in a leaf pattern, but just really random, almost filling in between my bouquet with little patches of green. Not back and forth, not consistent, leaving a lot of canvas open, but just knowing that that bouquet all of the inside will be filled with green. I'm gonna go right into my water and go into that mixed light green. And I'm gonna hop around both where I created the pattern over the dark green. You can see, here's a perfect spot where you can see, I hope you guys can see. I did the dark green first, really random. I didn't create an outline. And now I'm just going right over that dark green with the light. And you can see how the water just lets it blend automatically and does all the work for you. Always going into that water though and using a watered down version of the folk art. I need a little color right here. So I'm actually gonna add a ton of water. So it's a really soft, green color. Maybe over here, a really soft green color. Not a defined edge. It's almost like I'm pouncing color to create a little bit of green around these flowers. And when you jump around, you can see the dark is already starting to dry. So when you layer a color on top, you get all those different values of the same green color. Adding water to that dark green. I'm gonna just kind of go over in just a few areas with that dark green. You can create a vine in the center if you want to. Know that it's gonna kind of bleed and blend, giving you that really organic feel but I'm just gonna jump all around filling that area with color. You guys can see some of the areas like, look, the green kind of bled into the pink, totally awesome. Right there, that orange was still wet. So the green and the orange are kind of blending together, but that is the characteristics that you actually want. The colors are still staying vibrant and gorgeous, but you're getting all of that really authentic watercolor techniques. I'm going into that dark green. And what I'm gonna do is those few little areas where we created that stem, I'm just gonna follow that pencil line and create that stem. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the darker green mixed with water. I'm gonna kind of use the flat chisel edge of my brush and I'm just gonna kind of go over those pencil marks and bring those stems into my vase. And they're not perfect. You can see each end is at a different level. 
I'm kind of following that natural line, but they're not perfect. They're just kind of blending together. If it's still wet, it's kind of blending into the green, but it's still giving you the concept of those natural stems coming into the vase. You guys, I should have called for one brush because I'm still only using the medium flat brush or this is a number eight flat brush. I always tell people the reason we call for a set is because some people are more comfortable with a small brush. Some people are more comfortable with an average brush, which obviously is, is what I am. And then some people like a larger brush. So use whatever brush you're most comfortable with. So all of our green, we've just got such good variety and such placement. If you want a little bit more green, I'm going to go right into that light green and a ton of water. And I'm just going to add even more really soft green around some of my flowers. Not all of them, but just some not in any particular pattern, just pouncing, but just to create all that variety. All right, I'm gonna clean that brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of this true blue, oops, onto my palette and the tiniest bit of black. Oops. And I think I'm gonna stick with the same number eight for the vase. And then I might skip to the half inch when we do the table or the, or the surface that the vase is sitting on. So going into that water, I'm gonna mix equal parts blue and water. I might do two parts water to one part paint, dabbing it on the paper towel so it's not drippy. And then all I'm going to do is go right over my pattern, not perfect, and almost like you're sketching the edge of your vase. Lots of water, but almost like you're just sketching that. And once that's sketched, I'm going to drip, I'm going to go directly into the water and just kind of soften that edge. I don't want all of the white to turn blue but I definitely want to soften the edge. I'm going to sneak up here and the green and the blue is doing exactly, oh, that's why I love watercolor. See how the green and the blue are just kind of blending together, but they're not muddying and they're giving you just a really great look. A little more of that blue, but mostly water. And I'm just gonna stroke a little bit between around my stems. You know, when you look at your flowers in the vase, you see both the glass behind the stems and in front of the stems. So if the blue covers up some of the green, that's perfect. And if some of that white still shows, that's perfect. It's just giving you all of that depth of a glass vase. Adding more water to my true blue. I'm gonna just maybe darken one side of that vase and maybe the bottom with a little bit more color, not too much. A fun thing is to just go back in and add just water and kind of watch the colors move together. It's a really fun technique. I'm going to go into that black and add mostly water and just the littlest amount of black. Same rule, you can always add more paint, but you can't take it off. And then I'm going to mix that white or that black, I'm sorry, right over the wet blue. And this is where I always tell people if you love that bright blue vase and you don't want the contrast of the black, you can totally skip this step. But I love a little bit of black in almost every painting that I do. And what I'm gonna do here is just envision 
So your vase is sitting on the table. You know how you always see the bottom edge of your glass of your vase through the vase. So all I'm gonna do with that black on my brush is I'm just gonna kind of envision a half circle or the base of that vase. And I'm just gonna kind of create a bottom, not a perfect line, but just almost representing the bottom of that base. See how you get all that variety? It's just water, blue, and the littlest amount of black. All right, then I'm gonna skip to that half inch brush. If you want to go to a larger brush, but if not, the smaller brush will do the same thing. I'm gonna go into the water and a little bit of that blue, mostly water and a little bit of paint. And I am just gonna go back and forth, really random, because you don't wanna create a stripe. Lots of water, not soaking your canvas, but lots of water in your blue paint. And I'm just gonna create a few areas that are blue, same brush, not cleaning it. I'm gonna pick up some of that lime green, and I'm gonna both apply paint in the blue area, but also on the plain white canvas. And have fun with it here. If you want the base or the table to be more green, add more green. If you want it to be more blue, I'm gonna leave a lot of the white because I love that look. And I'm just gonna go in and add water to soften up some of the areas. I don't want to create a pattern or stripes. I'm going to barely touch a little bit of that black that's already watered down and almost create like a shadow where the vase would be blocking the light. Now, you guys, with this technique, let's see if you guys can see it. See where the blue of my vase is bleeding into the black? That's not a mistake. That's when I. That's what I love about watercolor. Like that is just character. It's just creating that beautiful effect that only watercolor can do. So if your blue is bleeding out of your vase or your green and blue are blending together, don't go in and try to stop that. That is part of why this technique is so unique. All right, so really we've got a really, that's kind of fun. If we didn't go in and add the pen and ink, we've got a really cute look, a really soft watercolor pastel flower bouquet. All right, so that is all of our base coat or our watercolor, our painting technique. And now what we're gonna do is the fun part, which is with the Sharpie. So the key to this, you guys, is I am gonna hit this with the blow dryer, but the key to this is you don't want so much water that you're going to blow paint around your canvas. So make sure you don't have, I've got areas that are wet, but they're not puddled or pulled where they're so going to blow. Stem, yeah. You, you may want to um, oh. look at your stems that pop out. Right? I saw, <laughs> yep. I get so excited. You're right. So I'm going to go to number six flat brush use a smaller one if that's what you're comfortable with. If not, that eight would work. I'm gonna go into that lipstick red, half water, half lipstick red. And all we're gonna do for this is do little, almost chisel edge brush strokes, just kind of following that natural pattern of that stem that we painted. Each one's not exactly the same. Oh, each one's not the same. Lots of water. And they're almost just dashes, like one or two dashes, dash, 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 and just kind of following that stem. Sorry, guys, I totally forgot our wildflowers. I got so excited about the pen and ink part. And like right there, I've got some green. I'm going 
over that because layering color with this technique always looks really, really good. I'm gonna go back in that red and just like we did before where you kind of jump around the canvas, that gives you different shades of the same red. If you guys wanna add a little yellow or a little pink, add whatever, whoops, whatever color you like. And then using that same number six flat brush, I'm gonna sneak back into that dark green, classic green, adding water and dabbing on my paper towel, just so you don't have too much water. And then I'm just gonna connect using my chisel edge, each little bud to that first stem that we did. I'm going right over that wet red and you can see, that's one of the great things about folk art. Well, I hope you can see. See how the red and green mix, but they never muddy up and create an ugly brown. They just give you that traditional watercolor look. I'm gonna connect each one to that main stem. No. And if you guys want to, if maybe some of your stems, you want them a little more, a little more bold, or you want a vein in one of your leaves, you can go in there and do that. Otherwise, we can just add it with the pen and ink or the Sharpie at the end. So add a layer of green. If that's what you prefer, if you want it more watercolor, just leave it exactly as it is and we'll do all the fun details with the Sharpie. Did I forget anything else, Emily? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you got it all now. Oh, good. All right. So back to the blow dryer. It's the part we hate about these one hour classes, but we want to do the fun part. So I can see that I've got a few wet areas, but not super, super wet. The main reason why you don't want them super, super wet because you don't want the blow dryer to blow your paint like an airbrush. Any questions before I hit it with the blow dryer? Just some comments about people saying that it's beautiful and they're really enjoying this process. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, so be careful with the blow dryer. Don't get too close. If you've got some really wet areas, dab it just really lightly with the paper towel. You can see it won't remove, it won't remove the color. It'll just take off some of that really wet area. But otherwise the blow dryer, we wanna get this super dry so we can do the pen and ink. Ooh. All right, I think it's totally dry. I love acrylics because they dry so fast. I think it's absolutely perfect. Oh, maybe a little wet right there. All righty. Everyone got a really dry 
soft watercolor, lots of color, lots of layers, lots of blending. I actually love what my vase did right there. I'm kind of it's really out, but pretty. It so yeah. Oh, thank you. The white I love, like it almost creates another layer. Okay. So everyone makes fun of me here at the studio for the pen and ink part because they always they always say you're just going so fast and you're not thinking it through and no 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 I kind of think for me anyway that's the key because if I overthink it it almost becomes like a really a really perfect outline um, and you don't want it to be an outline you want it to be like a doodle or a scribble so we had a joke the other day when we were doing a watercolor like this is you almost have to pretend that you're on the phone with like your best friend. And you know, when you're just doodling on a piece of paper and you're not really paying attention, but you are, and you create this beautiful, really loose organic doodle. That's the mood for this part of the thing, because this is so loose and so organic and so watercolor. You don't want to get the Sharpie out and start outlining where the pink meets the orange or where the yellow and the orange meet, or you don't wanna outline exactly around where that red paint applied. What you wanna do, let me show you guys. See, where's a good spot to show? Here, this is the perfect spot, I think, if I can be still. See how the black is really just as loose and organic as the paint. It's not exactly where the white and the orange meet. It's not exactly like that line for the center of the leaf is not even matched up with the green. It's just the feel. A little scribble in there creates some shading. This little almost scribble doodle has no paint behind it, but it just adds a cute layer. This little blob of green, we didn't create a perfect pattern, but I did two little sketched leaves just again to create that pen and ink look. So the only tip that I have is just be really loose, almost fast, almost scribbly. I'm gonna hold that up there. Maybe what we'll do is the pink first. So see how the edge does not outline the pink? It just mimics what those petals will look like. So we'll do the pink flowers first. So I'm using an ultra thin Sharpie, any black permanent marker will do. And I'm gonna do the edge first and I'm just gonna kind of scribble. I'm gonna go fast and I'm gonna make sure that I'm not outlining the edge of the pink. I'm just creating almost the, the illusion of petals or a loose um, petally edge to the flower. And then on the inside, same thing. I'm gonna do one loose layer. I'm not gonna repeat it all the way around. I'm gonna jump to this side. Then I'm gonna do a little bit on that side, maybe a little swirl to create a tight center. But you're just, I, doodle and sketch is the best way I know to describe it. Same with this little pink flower. I'm not outlining exactly. Sometimes I'm in the pink, sometimes I'm actually over on the green. A little swirl, a little swirl to create the center. I'm gonna do the same thing to this little pink flower. A cute little swirl. You can always go in and add more doodle. When I get it close like that, can you guys see it? Yes. Ah, it's hard to see on my screen if you guys can see it. But see how it's not exact at all? It's just, it's just like a little scribble. And then this little yellow orange, I'm gonna kind of outline the center, the little yellow area to start with. But I'm not, this is a perfect way to see. I'm not outlining the yellow ah, where the yellow and orange meet. I'm just creating that doodle. So I'm gonna do the centers or the yellow area. I'm gonna do the outside orange. This one's a little bit more like petals, but nothing exact.
And then I'm going to do, see these little lines? Oh, I'm going to do a few little lines coming out from the yellow. Let's see if I can do this. Is my hand covering it? Nope. See, just each one's different. It's real sketchy and loose. And then I'm actually going to just dot, almost just pouncing that Sharpie around the end of those little lines. And all that does, ah, all that does is just gives you some for fun, whimsical, just a real whimsy, fun pen and ink pattern. Each line is different. Don't forget, you're acting like you're talking to your friend on the phone. You're not paying attention. You're not going slow. You're just having fun. I'm gonna do a few little dots in the yellow centers of those flowers. Not everywhere, but just a few little areas because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to be a perfect pattern. Pen and ink is really loose and fun and sketchy. And each flower is different than the next. So there's little orange guys. Our little wildflowers are our little red, red stems. I'm gonna sketch right over those main stems. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with each little red bud. I'm almost shaking and scribbling around it. Let's see if I can do one. I'm just kind of scribbling around it. Not too heavy, but just really, oh, is that too close? See no, how white shows? Perfect. Yeah. A little white, a little red, but it just defines it a little bit more. And then I'm gonna use that Sharpie, just like we did with the paint to con connect each little bud to that main stem. I'm gonna do that to all of those little wildflowers and then connect them. If you were to outline each element, like outline the red, it just wouldn't look the same. See how some of the white is pe peeking through and then the red, but it's just each one is different and unique. That's the look that you want. And I'm gonna connect them to that main stem. And then we're just gonna keep doing the same thing. I'm gonna do these main leaves, create a center. I'm gonna do a little bit of, I don't know, maybe highlights by adding just a little extra scribble. I'm gonna outline it. I'm gonna do the center, maybe scribble a little on the edge. a few little lines just to create some character. This little guy right here, our heart, I'm gonna outline him. I'm gonna do his stem, but then maybe a few little highlights. Same with this little leaf that's coming over into my vase. I might go over him twice. So he's almost got two outlines and do the same thing here. Add as much of the Sharpie as you like. If you want it really soft, you can add less. I'm gonna go right over my stems, not exactly, not outlining, but almost just doodling right over the areas that we added the paint. And then in these areas that are just green, let me hold this up for you guys. Oh, it was just solid green with a little bit of variety, light and dark. I'm just gonna add a few doodles of leaves where it makes sense. Like I'll add a few up here on the top, maybe a few here, but they're not defined by color. You're just adding them with the Sharpie. So maybe right here, 
I'll just doodle two little leaves right here. I might do a little scribble, which would just kind of mimic, you know, natural green elements. Right there, I might do a little leaf coming out that way. But they're all just very random. You don't want to fill it with leaves that are all going up into the left or all going out of the flower. You just want to really just have a few organic areas. And then a great thing is just to scribble, just to kind of create areas that is nothing more than texture. Like here's a, a cute little area. I've just got almost like a blob of light green. I don't want to define it with a leaf. So I'm just going to kind of scribble over it and just kind of almost create, I don't know, what would that be, Emily? Um, I, I kind of <laughs> feel like that's where like the baby's breath or something would be coming out and it's just Maybe. very thin, um, yeah. you know, tinsel, some, something that's like coming out of the bouquet, tendrils, yeah. tendrils, there, there we go. go. So same thing here. I'm just going to scribble a little just to create all of that, all of that, ah, if I can get it in the screen, all of that texture and details. But yeah, just absolutely have fun with the Sharpie. The key to it is don't create a pattern and don't overthink it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the edge of the vase. I might do one or two heavier lines on this side of my vase. I'm gonna kind of scribble the bottom. I'm gonna scribble that area, almost like a half circle to create what would be the bottom of that base. I'm gonna do just a really light, almost like a, a highlight, I guess you could say, on that side of the base. I just scribbled up and down, and then I went left to right, almost creating like little hash marks. Every now and then, if you need to put, do your Sharpie on a plain piece of paper or your palette paper, it might just get a little moisture in it, but it'll start working again perfectly. And then I'm gonna define the table, not with a perfect line, but just a really soft sketch. I might do a few lines under my vase, maybe a few lines over here. Now don't push down too hard where you, you press through your canvas. but I'm just adding just a little. I don't want to define anything exactly. I'm just adding, adding some character. And then you're going to sign your painting. Add a little heart, maybe you give it to one of your friends. But look, you've got just such a beautiful, with water, very little paint, and a permanent marker, you've just got a really beautiful pen and ink bouquet. How'd everyone do? Does anyone have any questions? Uh, no, no questions, but just people are saying that they love the Sharpie work. They love how you're explaining it and that it's a really fun idea. They think it looks beautiful and such a great class. So you knocked it out of the park. Oh, I'm so excited, everybody. I love, now, I know they mentioned it in the beginning. We love when you guys share your art. So please, 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 hashtag Plaid Crafts and hashtag Michaels. And we love to see what you guys have painted tonight. That's our favorite thing. All right. So that is pen and ink watercolor using normal folk art acrylics and just doing a kind of a different, a different technique. I hope everyone enjoyed our class. We don't have any questions, Emily. Uh, some people were just curious if you can go back and add more paint to add, you know, a darker contrast. And I think you absolutely yeah. could. Absolutely. Yep. You definitely can. The only thing is when you do Sharpie again, make sure that there's no moisture and everything is dry, but yeah, you can add as much color as you want. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Bye.